This is the Mobile Tech Podcast, brought to you by worldpodcasts.com. Now here's your host, Tank Girl, Miriam Joie. Brought to you by Mint Mobile. Stay tuned for a special offer at the end of the show that will save you some money if, like me, you like having multiple SIM cards. Hi and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Joie, and today is Friday, February 10th. 2023 and i have the wonderful joshua vergara here with me today hi josh how are you hello i'm doing all right i'm not gonna lie tiny bit nervous it's been a long time since i've podcasted so thank you for being my first foray back into the world (laughs) well i have no doubt that you can do this in your sleep in fact let's start for our patreons who are watching this on video Show them the crazy setup you have, because this is like luxury for us here. Well, this is this is essentially the setup I have for all my content, and that will include things like podcasts, YouTube videos, even social media. So as long as I'm here at this desk, I pretty much have what I like to call the battle station. So I have three different cameras here, and then that would be the overhead rig, and then I do have a side rig just for like just just for a little extra, just to be able to show some nice. stuff off. So I'm switching Very among cool. all of them. <laughs> Great. So folks, if you're just listening to the show, you know, you can support me financially through Patreon and get the video version like a day ahead of time. And you can see us handling the phones. Of course, I don't have an overhead view, but we're going to talk OnePlus in case you're wondering what phone that was. That was the OnePlus 11. And uh, yeah, Josh, overall, what are your thoughts on this phone? I mean, I have a lot of to say. So and we have a lot of time. <laughs> so. <laughs> We do have a lot of time. And you know what? We had plenty of time even after the actual India launch. Uh, We were all hanging out and kind of um, debriefing on the announcement and the phones. And some of us have had it for some time, of course. Uh, Overall, I have to say, like, while it may not be the kitchen sink phone, we'll call it that, it may not have literally everything, I have to give OnePlus some credit that they've created a phone that is actually fairly easy to recommend to people. mainly because its price is actually kind of palpable. Like it's down to around that $699 price point once again. And because of that $699 price point, we have the right processor. We have a lot of uh, pretty good features and what is actually a pretty decent camera setup. Uh, The whole Hasselblad of it all, like we can always dive into that a little bit later. But um, I do think that for, for this price, this package is actually quite compelling. And I would actually tell people, you know, if you're looking for a phone that has a lot of features that you might want on the daily, but you don't want to pay too much for things you you don't need this might actually be a pretty good recommendation here 100 percent. mine is right here this is in the case but oh, you got the case i came back from new york and it was here so you might want to ping the oneplus pr folks right because that came from them that is something that i wish that i do have on this phone because like this green edition is really nice. I, I'll take green anything when it comes to smartphones and tech. The only problem is, you know, like with most people, after I wash my hands properly with soap for 20 seconds, this phone becomes so dang slippery. Oh, and- it's <laughs> crazy. Like mine is uh, also the green one. I'm just showing it. Oh, there you go. But this is a, a nice case, which is kind of necessary. Honestly, it's got that, it's got, it's that full carbon fiber case that OnePlus has always had. Um, mm-hmm. And it honestly feels a little safer now (laughs) (laughs) frankly i'm amazed i haven't dropped it yet um but um you know i think i can echo a lot of what you said about this i think that there's kind of different kind of angles and perspective like i can't quite make up my mind about this phone like on one hand i'm like it's a hundred dollars less than a samsung galaxy s23 and it delivers quite a bit more in some ways, and it's missing a few things. And Mm -hmm. if you don't care about those few things, this is an incredible deal. The value is outstanding. But then I have another angle, which is like, yes, kudos to OnePlus for making a phone that finally is a little more affordable, but you did cut some things out that I feel are unacceptable in this category at any price. And so part of me wishes that they wouldn't have cut out these couple of little things that are not that expensive and would have left it at $699. And then we would have an absolute winner. Like we'd have an absolute one plus of the old times, minus, of course, 
Oxygen OS from the old times that we all miss, but it's no point in being a dead horse. So I'm not <laughs> going to go in that direction in the conversation, you know? Yeah. Um, when it comes to a couple of those things that, because I, I remember, I'm sure we're going to talk about at least one of these features that might be missing because we talked about it a lot <laughs> after the event. I know you have some really strong thoughts about wireless charging, <laughs> but you also have a really funny anecdote about when you found out that wireless charging <laughs> was not on this phone, which I, I, I thought it was a hilarious story, but it's also very true because if you expect a premium phone like this to have certain things this is not the way to find out it's not there. <laughs> yeah, so that's obviously the thing that I'm going to sound like a broken record about on this podcast. Sorry, folks. You know how the Miriam <laughs> rants go, but let's start with a bad thing, which is to me the bad thing, which is the wireless charging, which is completely missing. And look, I don't know. I, I know some of you are going to say, oh, who cares? This is completely irrelevant to me. Well, guess what? You are winning today. This is the phone for you because honestly, at that price point, you know, you're getting a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, you're getting that Quad HD display, you're getting a really good camera setup, you're getting really great battery life, you're getting 100 watt charging, 80 watt in the US. You know, you're getting an incredibly well rounded package. You win. But for me, I cannot live without wireless charging. And it was really vexing that after multiple OnePlus flagships, you know, like key models accepted, we we just dropped that feature. We just and we didn't even drop it in the sense that it's not even mentioned anywhere. So as you said, my story is <laughs> I got the I phone, the I unboxed it, I'm all happy. I'm like, oh my God, this phone is great. It's hitting all the boxes. OnePlus is back and I put it on my wireless charging by my Pixel charger. And I walk away for a few minutes and I do some stuff and I come back and I'm like, wait, you didn't charge. Oh, maybe it's unplugged or something. I, so I'll take my my OnePlus 11, I pop it down on the OnePlus charger at the other end of my office. And just, I'm like, that's going to go, right? I don't even look at it. I don't see the light. Charge. I just walk away. I'm like, I'm done. It's a done deal. Come back another few minutes later, and I'm like, it's not charging. Oh, what the hell? So then I'm like, <laughs> does it not have wireless? This is when it occurred to me. Does it not have wireless <laughs> charging? And sure enough, it doesn't. Actually, I had to ask the PR folks because... It, in the specs, it doesn't mention anything. So it's like it's, it's omitted in the specs, but it's not like clearly spelled out for you that it doesn't have it. So I was like, oh, you got to be freaking kidding me. Damn it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the camp that you were saying, like the other side, where um, wireless charging, while it is a feature that if it's available, I will definitely use it. I'll take advantage of it. I think I have like three here in the office. I even have the, um, the old, I want to say it's a Xiaomi charger where yeah, you put it on the I have one of those the too. Light, mm -hmm. Yeah. The light comes down and it finds the phone. Obviously, if you put this down, you're just going to see a blinking green light because it doesn't have wireless charging. It's just going to like, it's just going to spin its wheels. But I've been using a couple of different phones that, like, for example, um, I, I've, I'm still on the Asus Zenfone 9. I adore this phone. It doesn't have wireless charging. So because I don't have it, I just sort of adjust my usage and make sure yeah, that I for plug sure. in whenever I need to. Um, but the thing is, I, I don't know. I, I do agree that it's a feature we've had on recent OnePlus releases, and it's really odd to not get it this time on a phone that is supposed to be not just a flagship, but it is the sole smartphone that they are making this time around so to so not make claim sure... <laughs> oh fair fair, that is fair. I mean, no no i think then their claims are correct but i have a mm -hmm. counter argument to that we'll get to later but i agree with you look i think that if this this is potentially a, a conversation you're fast forwarding to right now because you're like i don't care and so let's you know let's move on to the rest and i will in a second but i just want to explain to you how <laughs> i i look at it as a from a market perspective. Sure. If you look at the US, it's and even Canada, and in general, the West, there is a lot of Samsung's versus Apple out there. You know, now not as much in Europe, but the reality is Samsung and Apple, almost anything that's close to resembling flagship level has wireless charging, right? And Apple, pretty much every phone they make has wireless charging. So my perspective is. You're competing in this market. You're not just competing in India and in China, you know. And and so why is it's also a maybe adds a dollar or two to the bill of materials, and mm. it adds maybe a millimeter of thickness. Okay, 
Why couldn't we get that? At least maybe for a U.S. model or a Western model, you know? And, and that's kind of why I'm upset, because I'm like, it's table stakes, you know? It, and you, you, you don't miss it until you realize it's not there, basically. And so the other argument I want to make is, and this applies to a lot of folks, is if you have a car that's any new, any recent car, like five years or less, most of them now have Android Auto, and most of them have it wireless. And so the, the use case is you get in your car, you put your phone down somewhere, or you leave your phone in your pocket, it connects wirelessly to your infotainment system, Android Auto fires up, and you get your, your great Android Auto experience. And then the problem with that is, I don't know if you've used it wireless yet, um, Josh, on a car, but it drains the battery on your phone quite a bit. So oh, yeah. what car makers have done is added a Qi charger to all their cars. Like most new cars, even cheap ones have Qi and have some sort of wired or wireless Android Auto. Now, if you have wired Android Auto, like your Ionic 5, yeah, no problem. You plug in, you have a cable, it charges at the same time, it's a done deal, right? But if you're wireless, you just plop it down the Qi charger, it keeps the charge maintained, at least it doesn't drain it. You get to the destination with the same charge you started with, and you get a completely wireless experience. Better yet, a lot of cars now have a thing where if you leave a phone on the Qi charging pad, and you turn off the car, or you open the door, it pops up a message on the screen saying, hey, don't forget your phone. Mm -hmm. How magical is that? You know, <laughs> as an aside, my Model 3 does not have Android Auto and it does have two Qi charging pads and it doesn't remind you to pick up your phone. And the number of times I've left my phone in the car, which is also my <laughs> key, right? So you can imagine you leave the car, you think the car is going to lock itself as you walk away, but it doesn't because the phone is your key, the key is in the car. <laughs> so a few times I've gotten in the restaurant and realizing, oh, where is my Pixel? Oh yeah, it's in the car. And so I walk back to the car, which has been unlocked all this time. Yeah, so it's, it's not ideal, but that's mm -hmm. a Tesla problem, not a Hyundai Ionic 5 problem. So <laughs> you're in good hands, Josh. The point I'm just trying to make is that's just one use case scenario for wireless charging that I think is compelling. And you know, you're paying this kind of money. If an iPhone SE2 at 400, what is it, 450, 429, has Something around there, yeah. wireless charging and has wireless CarPlay and a, when a car that handles it, like why couldn't my 699 super awesome flagship from OnePlus not have that? You know, that's kind of where I'm at. And that's, it's, it's sweating the details. And you know they removed it to save money, which I applaud because the value prop is here. So I can't be too upset with them. But at the same time, it's like removing the alert slider on the 10T. It's like you're trying to play with fire here, OnePlus. Like you're, you're at the edge of what's acceptable, you know? Yeah, on, on, on that note, you just mentioned the alert slider. Glad to see it back. It's nice to it's see back. it. Uh, it's back. I'm glad to see a feature that OnePlus has sort of pioneered and has made their identity return to the phone. Uh, you make the point about, um, well, we're making the points about wireless charging and whatnot. How do you feel about the prospect that you can have wireless charging omitted because fast charging, and I think, is it officially VOOC? No more warp, right? It's not warp charging. No, it's, it's VOOC. just VOOC now, yeah. Yeah. Um, is that enough of a consolation prize? Because I know with any OnePlus phone that we've had in recent years, it is kind of still, it feels a little magical, right? Like to be able to plug 100%. in the phone yep. and it just charges up so quickly. Now, granted, you need to have the, not really proprietary, but you need to have the charger, the specific charger on you. Uh, but even then, like, I, I don't know, I, that, that's sort of the, that's sort of the, that's the scenario that I find myself in, that I'm taking advantage of fast charging, whether it's PD or VOOC in this case. And I'm able to get through a whole day without really any issues. Um, and I understand these uh, use cases that you're saying when it comes to wireless charging. Probably the only time that I've ever felt uh, envy for having no wireless charging is like sitting in a Starbucks and <laughs> drinking a decaf <Yeah>. latte. And <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't use this. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's kind of a cop-out because in the past, We've had both wired and wireless fast charging on OnePlus phones. And so you get options, you get choices. In fact, I'm making the argument that if OnePlus wanted to save money here, which I applaud, they could have just gone, like they did, I think, on the OnePlus, I think it was the OnePlus 9, not the 9 Pro, 
where it was just basic chi, 15 watt. They didn't put mm. the fast charging on the wireless. They only put it on the wired. And then the Pro got the fast charging on both. And that would have been enough for me, you see? And I think to some extent, OnePlus or Oppo, in this case, is philosophically opposed to putting basic chi on a phone. They, they've got to put wireless charging and they want to put their AirVook, you know, the super fast wireless charging. Yeah. And that's obviously more expensive and more complicated. And so I see kind of where they're coming from. But because it's table stakes, I'd rather have that and not use that as an excuse, you know, because what, you know what? Fast wireless charging is a luxury, but fast wire charging, I think, is a must have. And yep. OnePlus is one of the few that delivers this in the US and in North America in general right now. Right there, yep. nobody else has it. Apple is still charging at what, 30 watt and Samsung at 45 or something, you know? So that's kind of my mm -hmm. take. I feel like it's, it's a, basically so far they've only used excuses to justify this and I don't like it. <laughs> I just think they should just say, you know what? We're hearing you. We take your feedback. Yeah, we messed it. I mean, I, I know they'll never say, yeah, we messed that up, but I kind of almost want them to just say that and just let it to go admit it. because, you know, <laughs> I will, I will, I will be right there with you as far as one thing that they did mess up. Like, unfortunately we've gotten those fast, you know, air VOOC or whatever the, the warp wireless charging. And those were great, but with this phone, they've literally bastardized that product that they created maybe two or three years ago i think it might have been so i agree with you there that like oneplus made an offering and now they're just like no we're not doing that anymore so i totally agree with you there and also you know when they put the argument forward they say hey we've got 100 watt or 80 watt whatever whatever voltage market you're in charging on this flagship of ours for 2023 i'm like uh excuse me you had 150 watt on the previous phone so mm -hmm. like why don't we have 150 watt? why don't you give us the best you can yeah. See? I'm almost I would almost be okay with like a 799 or an 899 phone if it had like if it was the kitchen sink phone. Like if they were able to make a kitchen sink phone that's not a thousand dollars, it's maybe eight hundred, that'd be pretty cool. I, I, I would say that I'd be okay that, with that. Yeah, I think that honestly right now they could have totally put 15 watt chi and priced this at 729 and mm. it would still totally undercut the Galaxy S23 and mm -hmm. totally walk all over it in terms of specs. And we'd be done, right? Like, and, and this is a problem, you know, people are already kind of like pushed into buying Samsung or Apple when they walk into that carrier store, right? We know that OnePlus and Google are not getting the love they deserve from the operators because the operators are in bed with Samsung and Apple. And, you know, it's kind of a self-perpetuating cycle of they make more money that way. And I get it. But if you add any kind of friction to the OnePlus experience, you're less likely to get a customer, you know? So That's true. Reduce that friction as much as possible. And um, you also know damn well that, you know, starting two or three months from now, that phone's going to be $599, $649. And so, so now it would have been able to be $699 if it had been a lower price year and had wireless charging. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, at that point... Like seriously, I fit people sticklers about fifty bucks on a phone that costs seven hundred dollars. I I doubt it. I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but I feel like if you're going that high, and first of all, are you buying? Are you even buying it through a carrier plan? Because if you are, then it doesn't matter how much your phone costs. You're not even going to look at mm -hmm. that. You know, that's very true. To uh, to OnePlus's <sighs> credit, uh, one thing that I think we that I think many of us were kind of impressed with is just how wide the availability actually is. And I'm talking like regionally. You have this phone actually being sold by OnePlus in the Middle East, in parts of Asia that they were not officially in in the past. Like I have to give them a little bit of credit there. Maybe that's the power of Oppo as their parent company. I think but so, yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that's nice though. Um, I remember, uh, shout out to our buddy TK, um, when he heard that it was gonna be in the Middle East, in the middle of the presentation, he actually audibly went, what? And he walked over to the, <laughs> <laughs> to the screen. It's actually gonna be there, that's crazy. So like, kudos to them on that. And I, I don't know, it's one of those things where, you know, it, it almost feels like OnePlus or Oppo or whatever you might call it, um, they're trying to just make a phone that like all of these markets could kind of agree upon. And for us here in the West, we know what is possible because we have had it in the past. Right. But now it's a, it's a 699 phone that's now going to be available in so many places. They got to cut costs somewhere, I guess. 
Yeah, and it's also interesting, I would like to add, that we're talking about walking into carrier store. These are not officially sold at carriers right now. Like, they are, True. there's no carrier deal here. So the only carrier offering I'm talking about is go to OnePlus's website and get a line through T-Mobile. I think there's an option to do that, but I don't think there's mm-hmm. an actual, you buy the phone from T-Mobile, lock to T-Mobile directly in the store kind of deal. I don't think that's mm. happening this year, which is interesting and kind of a step back. And I'm not against it because, you know, I'm a big proponent of buy your phones from the manufacturer unlocked, don't mess about. But I know that for a lot of people, that's another obstacle, right? You're on a family plan. It's time for that discount you're going to get on your new phone. It's been two years. You're ready to upgrade. And now you can't walk out of the, you know, AT&T or Verizon store with your OnePlus. You have to go to, you know, OnePlus online or Best Buy or whatever. Amazon and buy it and then get a line somehow, some other way. I can see that also being a challenge for mass adoption, but I don't think this phone is for the mass adoption kind of user. I think this phone is for the people who are, again, tech savvy, early adopters and very value and, you know, bang for the buck focus. And as such, OnePlus has delivered. I feel that that's, you can really say they've delivered. And Mm. in a way, that's kind of back to their roots, right? Because remember, they have cut out features in their previous phones that we, you know, wireless charging for a long time. Uh, Even we didn't have NFC on the OnePlus 2, which they quickly corrected. (laughs) You know, like I do know that it's hard. It's it's a hard place to be in the phone business right now. And I don't want to be too hard on OnePlus, but at the same time, part of me is like Oppo is a massive, BBK Group is a massive empire of a company like they just could absorb the cost they could make a little bit less profit on this phone and please everyone and that's where it bugs me and you know related to this i want to bring up some let's talk about cameras a bit now i i am a bit bummed that we're getting the same weird 2x telephoto that we found on the fine x5 pro and on the oppo fine n2 which is a essentially a portrait lens like for for portrait photography, and it doesn't have OIS. And it's not a particularly exciting sensor. It does have autofocus, at least. But I'm kind of questioning why, I mean, you're getting that nice proper focal length and proper optics, right, to make a portrait. But why not use the main sensor at 2x? Wouldn't that be a better photo? (laughs) You know, I'm kind of wondering, you know, because the main sensor has OIS, has 50 megapixels, et cetera. What's your take on the camera stuff? I wonder if it's more or less a, it's a, it, it's a Hasselblad influence. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I, I agree that having just two X in a separate lens does, does make things a little bit weird. Um, we're, we're a little bit spoiled over this last week by the three X and the 10 X zooms of the S 23 ultra. Why? And, yeah. And it's also, I, I'll be, I'll, I'll be the first to say uh, or I'll always say that I don't really zoom when I do photos and videos on any smartphone, but when it's available, I do like using it. The thing is on the on the OnePlus 11, um, <laughs> I think I'm pretty much in your camp of why not just put the same Hasselblad processing on a 2X digital zoom from a high-powered main sensor. But at the same time, I kind of like this language that OnePlus and, and Hasselblad are using in that you can go into the portrait mode and they give you the actual focal length and type of lens that would have been the equivalent on a Hasselblad yeah, camera. Yeah, 100%. In that sense, it makes perfect sense what they did. I still just mm-hmm. think they should have had OIS on that sensor. Just, you know. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You know, that's a, I it's, agree. it's like the OnePlus 7T back in the day, right? Had a 2X telephoto with no OIS. And at the time I said the same thing. I'm like, oh, you are so close. You are so close. You're giving us an ultra wide that has autofocus for macro shots. You know, Mm -hmm. and you're giving us a great main sensor and you're giving us a telephoto. But then when I zoom in, I can't keep it stable. But it's not the same here. It's more of a portrait lens. This is more of a, as you said, to satisfy the hassle plot experience, which I think they've done a phenomenal job with. I just want to point out a couple of quick things. This camera system is actually technically better and worse than last year's. Um, It's got a Sony IMX. 890 main sensor, which is a little physically smaller than last year and the year before's IMX 789 and 689. 
Um, and so pixels are a bit smaller, but it performs really well. The ultra wide, however, is improved over last year because it gained autofocus back, allowing you to do macro photography like the OnePlus 9 Pro did. And so that is actually pretty exciting to me. So honestly, I'm very happy with the camera system. Like I, I, I wish I had a really proper telephoto, like something more than 2X with optical image stabilization. Because again, like you said, I've just been using the galaxies for a few days. But overall, this camera system, I'm super happy with the results. Like I think this is one of the best they've ever done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put asterisk here, at least for myself. I, I can't speak for you, Miriam, but asterisk. Satisfied with the cameras, satisfied with the asterisk rear cameras. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not even talking about the selfie camera. Sorry. I just okay, want to talk about the rear, rear sensors. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because that's where my, that's where I draw the line is that, um, not to say that the quality of the front facing camera is necessarily all that bad when it comes to photos, but I still am just so flabbergasted at why all of these Chinese phones just do not think 4k on the front facing camera is important at all. That's just really my biggest issue. And it's becoming way too common <laughs> for this to be a problem. Yeah. Actually, it's funny because, you know, the only OnePlus phone that's ever had 4K video recording on the front was the original OnePlus Nord, which had two mm -hmm. sensors in the front. And it actually, I was amazed at the time. I was like, wow, 4K 30 on the front on a OnePlus phone? Yeah, they're getting it. And then every phone after that, every single phone, all the way to the like $899 or whatever it was, top of line pro phones, nothing. And Oppo is the same, like a Fine X5 Pro doesn't even have you know, 4K video in the front. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. In the in the age of TikTok, from the country that made TikTok, I understand that 1080p video is like TikTok's like milieu, but still, like if you are a serious content creator and you want to be able to use your smartphone for a lot of that content, you're going to want all of that data. You're going to want all of that detail, even if the end result's going to be 1080p in the app. That being said, like you can record 4K and upload it to TikTok. And there's even a, an option now in TikTok where it says upload at the highest quality. You can do that. Why can't huh. you do that? <laughs> and it, 4K gives you cropping options too without losing quality. You know, last Indeed. night I was at a restaurant and they had a little robot server, like a little robot. So I took a little video with my S23 Ultra and I cropped it after the fact, you know, because it's 4K. Like it was, I didn't center it right because I really had like two seconds to capture it because the robot was disappearing and I wanted to get <laughs> it and I got it. But then I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's a little too dark and oh, it's not cropped right. So I cropped it and I had 4K to start with. So I still am going to have a perfectly usable video when I post this as a reel later on today, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of stuff. But overall, I mean, other than front camera, I think they've done a good job. I think this phone just hits all the right boxes like battery life is great you know the snapdragon 8 gen 2 is such a phenomenal chip like just performance efficiency isp improvements it's just rocking it and uh the phone is you know it's this is a proper one plus flagship in many ways as i said like you know not just the specs but like metal frame you know, like it's not like the 10T had a plastic frame, for example, or like the, the 9 had a plastic frame. You know, things like that to me are, again, sweating the detail. I, I hate to remind you folks that a Pixel 7, even a Pixel 6a has an aluminum frame. Uh, an iPhone SE is an aluminum frame. To me, this is, you're going to say, I don't care, I'm in a case. But you do care because it's it's like, why would your money get you less, right? Very, very. That's kind of where I'm and at. It and it still feels like a premium phone, no matter what. Oh, it no feels matter what. phenomenal. Yes. Aside from the slipperiness, I'm still going to keep calling that out. But <laughs> um, that case, I'm still envious <laughs> of your case. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anything else you want to mention about the OnePlus? I the only thing I can think of is it's a bit weird that the charging brick is a USB A brick. And not a USB-C brick like before. Have you noticed that? I did notice that. And is, hasn't that been the case for many of the bricks over the last like few years? It's kind of a um, lottery. But in the last, the last few, like the 10T and the 10 Pro and the, all those were USB Type-C bricks. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not remembering that. The 10T is one of those phones that like, okay, cool. And then it's out of my memory. <laughs> well, Actually, it had a 160 you know watt brick, so... Yeah. Uh, you know what's crazy? Uh, and we don't have to dive too far into this, but my 10T actually bricked. I didn't do anything to it. It just can't get into the software anymore. Weird. 
Oh. Yeah, it just it just keeps bootloading and it uh, boot loops. Boot loop. Yeah, it loops into fast boot. Yeah, that's all it does. So I was like, I, I I didn't reach out because it happened months and months after the phone actually came out. But yeah, just just putting that out there. Like I haven't been able to revisit the 10T because of that fact. Uh, right. But that that fast charging on the 10T was great. If only one of the only top level features that that phone was bringing to the table. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was definitely to me the 10T was almost like a gaming phone. You know, like it, it just prioritized so many of the things a gamer would want, you know? So, sure. yeah. And then, um, so the type A thing is weird, but I want to, I, I did check with the PR folks. The brick is still PD compliant. So if you plug it into your MacBook, you can charge it at PD speeds. Oh, nice. So it's funny. I thought it might not be because until now, the only bricks that OnePlus has shipped that are both Super VOOC and PD have USB-C on the brick and a C2C mm. cable. This is the first one that I know of that is PD and C compliant, but has an A port. Now you know. Isn't it funny that we have smartphone manufacturers managing to create smaller charging bricks than even Apple themselves for the MacBook? <laughs> 100%. I mean, I use an Anchor Nano to charge my MacBook Air all the time. 35 watt it's the same size as the little five watt charger that apple ships or used to ship mm. with their phones back in the day so <laughs> yeah you will have to use the cable that oneplus provides to get the fast speed both for charging the phone and for pd on that adapter as a side oh okay yeah don't use like uh don't use an old a to c cable that's just floating around because you need the higher current spec and it does a it does a sanity check. There's a chip in the cable and it talks to it and it says like, oh. are you a cable that I can use? Yeah, okay. It's interesting. Today I learned. I didn't realize that, that it went that deep on the cable level. Yeah. Almost every proprietary high-speed charger will only work properly with the right cable and has a sanity check like that. Oh, okay. Either at the phone side or at the charger side, sometimes both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, overall, pretty good though, right? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I I know a couple of people who still believe in the OnePlus brand. Um, not to say many people don't. I'm just saying they they do. <laughs> and um, when they ask me for any recommendations on phones, I ask them, you know, how was how was your OnePlus the the previous one? I I, I even know somebody who used the OnePlus 7T until it just conked out on him. And I was like, hey, the 11's about to come out. Um, you know, the just announced, you can go ahead and figure, figure out how to get one of those 699 easy to go for easy recommendation for anybody that is that type of user, either you're experienced with OnePlus or you're not looking for the kitchen sink phone. Did, would this have been a great kitchen sink phone? Sure. But it still provides quite a bit. Yeah. hundred percent, especially for the money. And, you know, if you want the kitchen sink, spend $1,200, buy an S23 Ultra, call it a day. Like, <laughs> You know, I, I hate to say that's, that because that's the comparison. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Samsung's software experience, but I have to sure. say, you know, I use an S22 Ultra extensively, and now I've switched to the S23 Ultra, and you cannot get more kitchen sink than that. Like, if you want to check every box there possibly is, like, I'm so glad there's one company out there that unabashedly without hesitation, <laughs> is just throwing absolutely everything into a phone. Who cares about the price kind of thing? And in fact, yeah. the price is pretty good, you know, for what you're getting, I think. so. Yeah, I agree. So let's quickly talk about the buds and then talk about some of the other OnePlus stuff and then the news. Um, there's not a lot of news, but there's a few kind of critical things. I have the buds not near me, so I can't show you, but... Josh is doing a very good job at being a hand model right now. Um, <laughs> I have the green ones I as hope. well. Oh, look, I like these a lot, not out of the box in the sense that they are a little too bass heavy for my liking, but once sure. tuned with the EQ, not, not the actual, there's a way you can tune it to kind of tune to your ear, you know, like a lot of the earbuds have that feature today that do an analysis of your ear canal by pinging little sounds in there and getting that kind of like, like, um, like, you know, bats do with uh, sonar right mm -hmm. that's how they do it and uh that works pretty well but for me i like to have an actual eq i can set and then have the eq stay like the settings stay with the buds no matter where you pair them so if you pair them on a device that doesn't have the software to control the buds you don't you still keep the eq still keep all the settings right 
And that's one of the wonderful things about these earbuds is that have EQ settings that stay with the earbuds. So once you EQ them the way you like, they're phenomenal. The noise canceling is great. They have wireless charging. They are comfortable. <laughs> they have wireless charging. <laughs> that's the irony, right? Um, <laughs> they're comfortable. Um, I like the fact that the controls are squeezed, like the Air. Pods Pro and they click. You can hear the click sound. So you actually know mm -hmm. it's not like I hate the tapping ones because I'm always tapping something by accident and I get like noise canceling turns off and I get angry. And so I go in the app <laughs> and I disable all the tapping stuff, you know, if it lets me. Yep. And then, of course, then I can't control anything that I have to pull out my phone or my watch and it's just a hassle. So this is a really, honestly, one of my favorite buds in 2023 so far, well, or even 22. Right now, just so you have an idea of what I'm using, I have the Sony LinkBuds S, which are up there. I have the Realme Buds 2, which are really affordable noise canceling earbuds, $49, guys. And then I have the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. And I have, what are the last ones? Oh, you know what? I'm currently using the old Galaxy Buds Pro, not the new ones. Not the Pro mm. 2. And I rediscovered those recently. And I, they were just in a box. And I was just, oh, I haven't used these in a while. And I put them in my ear. I'm like, I really like these. They're really nice. So those are the ones I'm rotating through. What about you, Joshi? Uh Well, as far as the uh, OnePlus Buds Pro 2 are concerned, uh, I've always been impressed with what OnePlus can do on the audio side. I kind of miss the days of the, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but they had the neckband um, earbuds. And I really enjoyed oh, those. Like, yeah. <laughs> those sounded good. And because it was neck band, the battery life went for so long. And it was like the perfect, uh, it was the perfect earbud to have as a backup for like long plane rides. Uh, but as far as these are concerned, um, I actually really like them a lot. I will say the ANC and the ambient modes are not, they're, they're kind of middling. I think I'll use the word middling. Um, they're not. They're not particularly. Um, they're not extraordinary by any means. The ANC is the type that you turn it on and it does. It does take away a fair amount of the noise around you, but you have to fill in the rest by actually listening to something. These are not going Correct. to have like a yeah. proper earplug effect like some other yeah. earbuds. And then the and then the ambient mode. The ambient mode is serviceable. That's the term I'll use for that. It's just that I only find myself comfortably using the transparency mode. I, that's what OnePlus actually calls it. I only find myself comfortably using the transparency mode when I have only one earbud in. If I have both in, it still feels like I just have just enough that's being blocked that I can't really comfortably use them and have a conversation with somebody. Um, so those are just a couple of things to like kind of keep in mind with the quote unquote premium features of what are actually one hundred and seventy nine dollar earbuds. And then there's a feature that I feel like was only made for somebody like me. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it too. Uh, the Zen mode. And this is something that I, it, it oddly is the feature that makes me come back to these earbuds. I never thought I would say that about a pair of earbuds, but you have both of them in ideally. And when you pinch and hold for, it says in the app three seconds, but it's more like four or five. Uh, when you hold long enough, the ANC triggers, and then you get, like a white noise and you can pick from like five pre-programmed white noises and they are downloaded to the buds. So no matter what Correct. you're using, no matter what phone, yep. no matter where you are, you can get some of that peace and quiet and some of that calm. Um, I use it all the time when I'm journaling. Um, I, I've taken up meditation again, so I'm thinking of using it for that uh, purpose if I do an unguided meditation. But it's just kind of cool that they were able to do that. Um, I, it makes me think for other people who may not be into the Zen mode type of feature, uh, it'll be great to like pre-program like one song <laughs> into these earbuds. So you always have yeah. something available. Like that would be kind of cool. <laughs> no, I love that feature too. I think it's really clever. And they had that on the previous pros, I think. But this is really well implemented. Overall, it's, it's you're right. They're not the best like ANC, the best sound. Again, you can tune that. But I feel that there's so many little details they got right. And overall, the experience is one of the best. Like, you're going to get better noise canceling from the Sony LinkBud S for sure. But agreed. You know, and the sound is really good on the LinkBud, but I I'm having connectivity issues with the LinkBuds often, you know. I they're not as mm. stable to me. And you know, they're not as comfortable necessarily either. Whereas I feel like the, those OnePlus Buds are really great. And it's kind of I feel like kind of like this they're the closest thing that's not Samsung to an AirPods experience. 
You know, including the so. setup, the fact that on a OnePlus phone, all the EQ and all the settings are baked right into the firmware in the Bluetooth menu, whereas you have to use the Hey Melody app on other Android phones. All these little things are what I think distinguishes these. And at 179 you know, they're not like cheap, cheap, like $99 or like my favorite, the $49 real me buds too, that are absolutely, trust me, buy a pair on Amazon you know, JV, they are totally worth it as a backup pair because they are incredibly good sounding, have good ANC and just cost nothing. Like they're just amazing. I got to try those. And $49, they have software too, I gotta try 49 that for bucks. Sure. <laughs> anyway, but my point is, you know, for 179, I think they've hit the sweet spot and they didn't leave out any features. Wireless charging is a nice perk here. So kudos to them. I like the buds. Same here. I'm a bit, I'm a big fan of them, and they may actually have a semi permanent spot in my bag. In all honesty, I feel the same way. These are going to replace my Link Buds S, I think, which were so far my my go to. Yeah. So a couple of more OnePlus products. I want to just briefly touch on the OnePlus Tab. Holy crap! Right, like I thought this was going to be like some kind of rebranded Realme tablet. You know, ten inches, three hundred dollars. You know, basic no no not much thought given it to it, just you know, you know, watch Netflix on your on your lap kind of deal. But no, no, no. They're going after the iPad Pro almost on this thing, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, right down to even the shape of it. Like it's got a it's got a pretty odd aspect ratio that may or may not be useful for for people that are looking to multitask in particular. I remember they did say it it'd be good to have like two vertical apps um on this type of seven by five aspect ratio like i've never I even said like that before. that yeah yeah it's interesting i dig it um it also has some of the features that i feel like a lot of people would want from the smartphones um and they've injected it into the pad so the oneplus pad also has like 144 hertz refresh rate uh i don't remember if it's a full hd or a quad hd resolution display i feel like it's full hd but Let i, I could be wrong okay um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look through the, the article as well, but I can't see what the resolution is. That being said, it also has um, 12 gigabytes of RAM, a 9,500-ish milliamp hour battery, and it can be fast charged at 67 watts. Like These are features that we would like want from a OnePlus smartphone, and they're just kind of taking that philosophy and putting it into a tablet. Now, my only real question here, aside from the fact that it's using a Dimensity 9000, so it's a bit of a dated chipset, can we just, as a, an aside, just say that's weird to me? Not because yeah. this is a very good chipset for the intended purpose. It's a year old, but it's a really solid chipset. It's going to run sure. circles around a lot of other tablets. But doesn't MediaTek have an entire line of chips for tablets called the Companio line? I'm just so confused. That's true. Oh, like, you're By the so way, right. the, the screen resolution is 2000p, so pretty high. Like we're talking, oh, okay. you know, close to 4K, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely above full HD. So let's just put it that way. It's above full HD. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a little bit odd it, like that they're sticking to a smartphone processor for a tablet. Um, I wonder if supply is something different. You know, MediaTek talks about all of those other chips all the time, but how many of them are they making compared to smartphone chips is probably my, my assessment. I also feel like OnePlus has more experience with phones, so using a phone chip might make them feel like a little more comfortable with implementing a tablet. I can't believe the display is so big on this. 11.6 inches. Like it's huge. That thing is massive. Mm -hmm. But with that massive screen, I mean, I have to give OnePlus some credit. Like they've been thinking pretty hard about this product. Um, They have the wireless keyboard that will pair with it. They they even have their own like Apple Pencil type thing called the Stylo. So they're already hitting the ground running as far as features on a tablet might be concerned. So I'm I'm excited to try it out. The looks are not my favorite. Let me just put it that way. But (laughs) no, (laughs) I agree. Um, I'm I'm with you. But it is nice. It's got like some kind of brushed metal finish. It looks like it looks like it's high. It's a high quality product. Do we have pricing yet on this though? I don't know, actually. Um, I don't remember because it's still coming in like, was it April or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's still not, it's some not months ready away. Yet. Yeah. And it does have some camera, which I don't see any data on, but I'm sure it's not. Yeah, sucky. but it's, it's centered in the middle. Like that's the part that gets me so weirded out. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a camera pod. <laughs> yeah, it's, it looks like a Cyclops is what it looks like. It's got a Cyclops on the back. I think it, <laughs> it looks different enough that I think this is a good thing. Like, honestly, I think this is a... this. I don't like the design myself, but I think it's a 
Good thing that it's unique and it's Fair. big. And obviously it's going to be in India. I don't know if it's coming to the West yet, but I think for that market, it's going to really hit the spot. I really appreciate how OnePlus is really integrating into an ecosystem here. The, the Buds Pro 2 support two devices uh, simultaneously. Yeah, multi-point. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I can see that being a really boon for having a OnePlus phone and that OnePlus pad using the same earbuds. Also, there's some kind of feature they couldn't explain to me the technical details of it. And you know me, I'm a technical person. All kinds of stuff was swimming in my head of, they <laughs> apparently support some sort of tethering setup between a OnePlus phone and the pad supported phones that is kind of seamless, like what Google does with Chromebooks and what Apple does with continuity. But they're saying it's extremely efficient in terms of power use. And so I'm wondering, is it Wi-Fi? What are they doing? Like, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not getting, I mean, it's one thing to wrap Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever around some kind of seamless experience. That's what Apple has taught us to do really well, right? But, and I can see OnePlus doing that, but how does it technically work, right? That's kind of what mm -hmm. I want to know. And of course, it doesn't have 5G connectivity, which is weird because it's got Dimensity 9000. Um, and I think you'd want that, at least in the West here, you know, it's more likely you, you can get an extra line for five bucks from your carrier, right? For your Apple Watch or whatever. So they're yep. not, the carriers are not going to be too excited about you tethering off your phone, right? So I think they're going to probably have to revisit the marketing around that and the messaging around that a little bit for different markets. Yeah, I agree. Um... Maybe we'll see the pad here. I'm still a little bit nebulous on the thought that tablets matter as much anymore. But, you know, if someone who's really into OnePlus, if they're if you're into it and you want to have some of that um, integration, I, I totally get it. I'm with you on the tablets. It's not a big thing for me. But I know some people love their tablets, especially their iPads, and I respect that. I know people, journalists yep. who write on their iPads and do all their work on their iPads. And you know what? If that works for you, amazing. I'm a hardcore, you know, good old pickup truck person, aka, you know, the, my MacBook is my it has to do everything. It has to do everything. Yep, totally agree. They also showed a mechanical keyboard, which seems to be a rebranded product right from uh, one of the very well-known uh key keychron who is one of the mm -hmm. very well-known mechanical keyboard manufacturers out there so this looks like a rebranded keychron q1 pro and it's called it's got a crazy name uh, i'm trying uh. to figure out oh one plus featuring keyboard 81 pro is what the full name so one plus featuring is kind of like this Brand, you know how Xiaomi makes like humidifiers and smart locks and stuff. And really what it is, is third party Shenzhen based companies are making these and hmm. Xiaomi is helping them distribute and include in their ecosystem. And that's why there's me branding on them, right? It's kind of yeah. the same deal here. I think that the OnePlus featuring brand is basically OnePlus peripherals made by third parties that are OnePlus branded and integrate well into the ecosystem. And uh, so that's why the name is. And this thing is really for Mac. I mean, the keyboard layer is for Mac, which is really interesting. I'm sure you can switch it to uh, Windows as well, but by default, it seems for Mac. It's wireless and wired. Looks cool. I'm not a mechanical keyboard person, but you I've, know, uh, I've used Keychron once or twice. I have one Keychron keyboard somewhere here in the office. I, I have to say, it was one of their low-profile keyboards. Not my favorite experience, if I'm being honest. Um, and this is a full-sized mechanical keyboard, so it might be a different experience. I, I may have just gotten one that wasn't suited to my typing needs. But you know, Keychron, they've been they're they're They've made their life on uh, crowdfunding and whatnot, but they have put out some pretty good products. I think that having a mechanical keyboard like this really speaks to like the super nerds who just happen to like OnePlus also. <laughs> and what I, that's what I love about it. It's so good, right? In a way. <laughs> I want to try it out. I do want to try it out. One thing that I have to mention, though, is that like silver bar that's on the back of the keyboard where you can like mm -hmm. stand the keyboard up so it doesn't take up much room. And I'm like, That's a brilliant stroke of genius, in my opinion. <laughs> I've never had to do that. Like, I have my desk, my editing bay over here. I've never had to take the keyboard out to make more room. Like, I just never have had to. So, I don't know. Like, it's, it's not been a situation I've needed a bar on the back, basically, to, like, stand up like your bicycle. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Kudos to them. It looks different. It looks cool. So, you know, I'm down to try it out if it, if it ever comes my way. Yeah, I'm do totally going to request one just for fun. It's not my thing either. Like, every time I try a mechanical keyboard, 
I'm just like, this feels so clunky to me. And, you know, I learned on these things because I'm old. I'm an old. I used those keyboards before. I should be okay with them. But no, everything is so low profile now. If it's not a laptop keyboard, I'm not interested. It's kind of amazing where I've gotten. Like, you know, that's just me. But don't judge me, please. I know you nerds <laughs> out there are really into your mechanical keyboards. And I respect you and and envy you for your you know, ability to type with long keystrokes. It's so much work. Like, oh my God. It is. I don't know. Yeah. A full-size mechanical keyboard takes some getting used to when you're used to laptops. Like, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So that's some of the stuff that OnePlus did. They also teased us about something that looks like a folding phone called the OnePlus 11 concept that will be coming to MWC. So I'll be in Barcelona. And so stay tuned for that. Hopefully we get to see it. But here's the thing. Last week on the show, we talked about how the government body that approves phones and stuff, right? Tina or whatever, they um, Mm -hmm. had, they revealed basically the name of the phones, OnePlus V Flip and OnePlus V Fold. And to me, it sounds like we're going to see basically the Oppo Find N2 and the Oppo Find N2 Flip rebranded and re, you know, cosmetically rebadged to be OnePlus phones. And that's what we're going to see a glimpse of at MWC. And that's kind of goes back to initially when we were talking about there'll be no other flagship phones from OnePlus this year. They mean, Mm. you know, slate, brick phones. There's not going to be a OnePlus 11 Pro or 11T maybe, but we're definitely getting a foldable from OnePlus this year. I'm I'm feeling it hard in my heart and I'm so excited about it. I can't wait. This is a proper direction for them. As a fan of the Find N2, I don't see this as a bad thing whatsoever. I hope right? that OnePlus I hope that OnePlus finds a way to sort of inject their own identity into the phone rather than it just being a rebrand or something like that. Um but yeah, I'm excited to see what if that is definitely the case, then I'm excited to see what those might be. And it sounds like I'm finally deciding to actually go to MWC. I've been on the fence about it for some time, <laughs> but oh, I guess cool. I'll Cool. <laughs> I guess I will uh go and this will be one of the things that I seek out. <laughs> for sure, me too. Speaking of BBK Group, this next piece, now we're into the news. This next piece is exciting. Last year at MWC, Oppo showed a demo, a prototype of a phone charging at 240 watts. And we haven't heard anything since then. In fact, ironically, in New York this past week, when we were all there for OnePlus 11 launch party or whatever you want to call it, (laughs) because <laughs> it was actually in India and we watched it on a big screen. So we all flew to yes. New York to go watch the uh, uh, the event in India on a big screen. You know, reasons, reasons. Um, but we, I remember talking with Nirav, I think it was, who Nirav was on my show last week. We were like, hey, whatever happened to the 240-watt SuperVook that Oppo showed us last year? Well, guess what? Press release dropped last night. There is a new phone in China that looks really hot, by the way, called the Realme GT Neo 5 240 watt. There's two versions. There's a 150 watt version and a 240 watt version. And yes, it can charge the entire battery, the entire 40, whatever it is, 4,600 milliamp hours in less than 10 minutes. Wow. (laughs) It's but does it have that. wireless charging? <laughs> no, it does not. It does not. And uh, the other one, the one that can charge at 150 watt, has a larger battery at 5,000 milliamp hours. So mm. they're the same phones, though. And the specs are actually pretty cool on this thing. It's got a 50 megapixel main camera with a YS. It's got a 144 hertz AMOLED display at 1240p, which is a similar resolution to the... What phone did I recently review that had a resolution, a weird resolution like that? It was the Xiaomi 12T Pro. Mm. It's kind of in between 1080p and 1440 2K. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting. Yeah, quad HD. Yeah, yeah. quad HD. So, like, that's where we're going, folks. We're going to be getting some 240 watt. Now, this is launching China only right now, but it's uh, my, my little finger tells me that it's coming to the West. So, we're going to get yeah. it, JB. At least a gl- we're, at least a global yeah. launch, right? Like correct, and, correct. And you're right; this thing looks really cool. Like, um, real, I have to give Realme a lot of credit for having some pretty out there design choices, and this one has that. Like, not only is there the stripe with the dare to leap down the side, 
but there's like an LED light on the back and yeah, the gamer and all of us is like, yeah, RGB everything. And that's exactly what it is. But <laughs> not, RGB all the not, things. not only is that light there, it's also in, it's also around a decoration that denotes that it has the Snapdragon 8 plus Gen 1. So yeah. it's like, wow, that's, that's branding for you. <laughs> You know, it looks spec-wise very similar to some of the other Realme phones, but with that 8 Plus Gen 1 and that crazy fast charging. And overall, it looks like a winner to me. Did you see the pricing? $470 for 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage? Are you kidding me? And then There's if you absolutely want... no way it's going to be that price when it's global, though. <laughs> no, but even if, it's a, even if it's like $550, that's insane. That is good, And, yeah. you know... The 150 watt version is a hundred dollars less. Like wow. Mm -hmm. So it, if they're it able does... to keep it that way, you know, this whole OnePlus conversation is moot because One uh, Realme is going to take that crown. You know. Well, I've always called Realme for the last year or two. I've been calling them the you know the one the new OnePlus basically. So yeah, this is not surprising. Mm -hmm. But look, this is exciting to me because I like Realme and I think this is ironically the thing we were talking about with Narav this week. Going where the hell is that thing they showed us a year ago? Well. Wait, no more. And speaking of Realme, I've got the Realme 10 Pro and 10 Pro Plus, which are great little mid-rangers. And there is now a Realme 10 Pro Coca-Cola edition, <laughs> which is superbly gaudy. <laughs> but I'm getting a review in it because I just had to make an unboxing video of that, just because just I got to see it. Um, and yes, this is exactly what you think it is. It's a OnePlus 10 Pro with a massive Coca-Cola brand on the back and Coca-Cola themed icons and, and wallpapers and, oh, please save us. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's so funny. Like these branded phones always get like, okay, some people will love that. Uh, some people might be super fans of Coca-Cola. Um, I remember when I got, I think it was an Oppo phone um, that was Marvel themed. I was totally into it. Oh yeah. It. Oh yeah. But why is it that these branded phones, these collaboration phones never get top specs? And that's what's happening with this Coca-Cola edition. You have a Snapdragon 695. Yeah, it's a mid this, yeah, it's total absolutely. This processor predates the gen generation. We don't even have a gen in the name anymore. <laughs> so it's <laughs> So it's just a little bit disappointing and I'm sure there's some people out there that are like I love that I have this phone but I can't do as much on it that all my peers can. Yeah. So having played with the Realme 10 Pro and Realme 10 Pro Plus, um, they're both excellent phones for the money. They're three hundred ish dollars, and they both have a hundred eight megapixel camera that has lossless three X zoom, where they're cropping the center, kind of like the two X lossless on the iPhone. You know, mm -hmm. they're cropping to the center, and they're not binning, so they're getting raw pixels. Of course, it doesn't work as well in low light, but you can take some superbly sublime 3x telephoto shots with that thing i was blown away when i used them back in november i'm unbelievable and the, the 10 plus is a little better because it's got an ultra wide in addition to uh the stupid sticker cam 2 megapixel macro and it has a dimensity chip that's a little better but um and also has rounded edges whereas the 10 pro the one that's coca-cola co-branded is just a flat display but they're oled they're at 120 hertz they're beautiful um i think the 10 pro actually is not oled it's the 10 pro plus that's oled but look the reality is you're right it's a mid-ranger and it's oh boy coca-cola damn <laughs> but i just who wanted who what for this thing i, to I just like... i just want it i just want it it's gonna be it's gonna be unbelievably <laughs> fun to unbox okay oh man one last thing we have to chat about. It's not much, but the Poco X5 Pro is out there. It just feels like I reviewed the Poco X4 Pro six months ago, and I did on Geekspin. Go check it out. Listen, if I put the specs side by side of these two phones, the, the, the X4 Pro from six months ago, from last summer, and the X5 Pro that just came out like two days ago, I can barely tell them apart. Like they're... This has a better chipset at 778G. Speaking of another phone without a Gen chipset, <laughs> there's a 7 Gen 1 out there. And we haven't it's even true. seen almost any phones with it. Like, what? So this is 778G, same chip as the uh, Nothing phone, in case you're keeping track at home. And uh, yeah, it looks like basically everything else is the same. 108 megapixel main sensor, lots of battery. Lots of good features, really affordable, four hundred dollarish price point, a bit less than that, I think three fifty. Like I love Poco phones, I just love them. Doesn't matter which one you give me, they're just all awesome. 
I have a I have a grievance that will not turn into a big problem. I'm just going to say I haven't heard I haven't heard from Poco in some time. So that's why when when this uh, when this phone was announced or when previous ones from last year were being announced, I was like, how come I'm not hearing from them anymore? So like I'm I'm interested in it. Poco will always have my heart just because of the uh, black and yellow branding that they have. I'm always going to enjoy all of that, and I want that phone. I see the picture. The uh, black and yellow looks real sick. I need to figure out who to talk to over at Poco to get these phones again. <laughs> I'll hook you up. Don't worry. We got this covered. No problem. Uh, but <laughs> hey, look, we're looking at AMOLED 120 Hz, 1080p. Let's see what else is there. I'm just looking at the specs. Yeah, the camera system is almost wide. a dead ringer of last year's. Like there's everything is exactly the same in the cameras. Uh, 108 main, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel sticker macro cam, 16 megapixel front with 1080p only. Of course, you know it. Uh, hopefully there's still a headphone jack because last year there was headphone jack 5,000 milliamp hour battery at 67 watts so you know it's cool I like it I think there is a headphone jack I think I see it in this photo okay good because last year it had one and that was one of the like I was like this is so nice it has a headphone jack yeah yeah no look I just want it's basically a PSA for you out there who <laughs> are big Poco fans the 5X Pro is your mid-ranger of choice Definitely one of the best values in mid-ranger, along with the Realme 10 Pro Plus that I mentioned. Not the Coca-Cola one, the the one that's a little better than that. Yeah, and starts at two and starts at two ninety nine. Like can't can't really belabor that point. Like Poco phones manage to be good values. Wow, it's okay. So it's even cheaper than last year's because last year was three fifty ish, maybe four hundred, depending on which SKU you got. Um, there's also, of course, a Poco X5, which is, I'm not even looking at that one right now. Wow. Wait, <laughs> the Poco X5 has basically the specs of last year's. It has the, the 695 Snapdragon, which the X4 Pro had last year, has a 120 mm. Hertz AMOLED. Jesus, it's $250. Yeah. Wow. 48 megapixel main though. That's fine. And that's the thing, like, it's, it's too bad that these phones are not really able to be sold in more regions. And by more regions, I mean the U.S. officially, because, <laughs> yeah. the, because phones like this, just put it on the front page of Amazon and you get a $299 phone with all of these features and good styling. That thing would sell like that. Um, and it's and just it a shame. And it doesn't suck. And we would say to the world that it doesn't suck and they would go out and buy them. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's too bad. It's honestly too bad. It's what I used to say about Honor when they had more um, affordable phones with some pretty good specs. Like the, the, Honor used to be the darling of Amazon unlocked phones when they were able to be sold on. When Amazon. they had GMS too, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, well, that's they what people could it. do. I mean, Honor's back now with GMS, but for a while there, that's what I think killed their their affordable phone market on Amazon. It was the lack of GMS. But now 100%. they're back, but they've been forgotten. So it's kind of unfortunate. But look at it, this way, folks. If you can afford this phone and you're looking at buying a Moto G of some kind, this is the one to get. Like, just, just don't even yeah. mess about. Because even if it won't support every band in North America, it will support enough bands, especially on Timo and AT&T, that you should be fine. Uh, Verizon probably won't work at all. So just be aware of that. Yeah. <laughs> True. As is the case with most imported phones. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, listen, I think we've gotten everything done today. What a what a week. It's been one plus week, really. It's like last week was Samsung week, and now it's one plus <sighs> week. I'm still catching up. <laughs> well, you know what? I just want to tease the audience a bit and tell them next week is going to be Oppo week. Mm-hmm. It's going to be exciting. Stay tuned. Well, I'm sure there's going to be more than Oppo, but definitely some Oppo in there. Josh, you want to tell folks where they can find you on the internet, your social media handles, and your various channels of publication goodness? Uh, absolutely. Um, you can find me at JV Tech T. That's JV. I love tech and I love to drink tea. You can find me at that handle on all of the platforms, including YouTube, uh, because now they have that thing where you can put youtube.com slash at JV Tech T, and that'll. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have that whole thing now. We have handles on YouTube now. Uh, who would have thought? But you can find me across all of the different social media networks, YouTube, TikTok, even Instagram and Twitter. I haven't touched Twitter in a long time, though, so don't expect anything there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, from there, uh, that pretty much does it. Yeah, find me all over those places. And I, I promise I will come back to podcasting properly sooner rather than later. <laughs> I mean, you're all set up, so I'm super excited about it. 
Folks, you know where to find me on the internet. I'm at Tank Girl, that's T-N-K-G-R-L, like the comic book character. Just drop the vowels and you get my Twitter handle and my Instagram handle. They're the same. Twitter is where you probably want to interact with me about the podcast. Obviously, Josh is not much on Twitter, but I'll relay on to him our conversations. And, uh, you know, Instagram is where you'll find pretty pictures of phones, pretty pictures taken with phones mostly. Really, I take them all with phones. Pictures of cars, pictures of travel, food, all the mm -hmm. good stuff. A lot of travel coming up. Yeah. So have a look at my Insta for that. There's a couple of YouTube channels you should subscribe to, youtube.com slash mobile tech podcast. That's where all the unboxings go and the specific phone slash earbud slash wearable stuff lives. And then there's youtube.com slash mobile tech more, which is where all the rest of it goes, like travel tech, car tech, home automation, anything else I come across that might be fun and fancy. So check out the YouTube channels. You know how YouTube works. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, click the little bell, comment. If you want to comment about the podcast as well, you can do it there. I don't mind. We can have a conversation that way and a little thread of discussion. Cool stuff. The podcast lives at mobiletechpodcast.com. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Spotify, everywhere good podcasts can be found. And you should rate or review the show if your app lets you. Please do that. That would really help for discovery and stuff. So I'd appreciate that. And if you can help me, there's a Patreon, patreon.com slash tankgirl. That's patreon.com slash T-N-K-G-R-L. We have a bunch of little perks there for you guys. We have a Discord server you can join. We have a video version of the podcast comes out a day before the podcast. It's a little less edited. It's got a little more of that raw vibe with us showing phones and you can see our faces and body language. It's a little more fun. So consider that. And you get it early so yeah and then i think there's other perks in there that are pretty fun like a monthly chat with me so you know if you can help me with patreon i'd appreciate it i, I can use your support you know this show is supported by you folks the listeners so please consider helping out if you can and of course if you don't like patreon i get it there's another option there's a paypal link in the show notes so you can uh, make a donation you know i like my coffee just like josh likes his tea so consider sending me five bucks or something for a coffee i'd love it i also want to thank our sponsor mint mobile so as you know, I'm constantly reviewing multiple phones. And while that's fun, it also means I'm constantly spending a lot of money for wireless service on multiple SIMs. That's where Mint Mobile comes in. And that's who I'm partnering with for today's podcast. If you also want to save money on your wireless service, switch to Mint Mobile. As tech-savvy early adopters, you've probably heard of Mint Mobile before, but let me quickly tell you how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? In my experience testing phones, Mint Mobile delivers the same data speeds and call quality as the big three for a fraction of the cost. Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their eSIMs, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. No more standing around and waiting in line at a big wireless store. You can keep your current device and phone number and easily switch services. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, Mint will ship you a new SIM free of charge. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, lightning fast 5G, and free mobile hotspot. Mint will show you how much data you use each month and recommend plans that save you money. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Use my link mintmobile.com slash mobile tech to get premium wireless starting for $15 a month. That's mintmobile.com slash mobile tech. Stop paying more than you need on your wireless bill and start saving big with Mint Mobile. And I also want to thank Josh for being on the show again. Thank you so much, Josh. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great to have this conversation and to get back to podcasting, like I keep saying. We're scratching the itch, but it's also getting stronger, so I need to get back on that. <laughs> yes, I'm super excited that I can help with that. Folks, I'll have Josh again in the future, and we'll have another show next week. You know it, so stay tuned for that. Until then, cheers, everybody. This has been the Mobile Tech Podcast with Tank Girl, proudly presented by worldpodcasts.com. You can visit us online at 
mobiletechpodcast.com.